avec euh, notre représentant per permanent, Bob Ray, et notre ministre de l'Environnement et des changements climatiques, Stephen Guilbeault. Cette semaine, on est ici à l'Assemblée générale des Nations unies pour travailler avec nos partenaires à travers le monde. Je veux commencer aujourd'hui par condamner les propos du président Poutine qui continue de faire escalader sa propre guerre de manière irresponsable. Canada condemns Putin's irresponsible escalation of the war, his partial military mobilization, his nuclear threats, as well as Russia's rushed referendums to try to annex parts of Ukraine are unacceptable. Putin's behavior only goes to show that his invasion is failing. Canada remains steadfast in our support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and we will continue to be there for Ukrainians as they defend their freedom and our democratic principles. During a moment of global crisis like this, it's important that we support one another. As Ukrainians are putting their lives on the line to free their country, people in some parts of the world don't have enough food to feed themselves and their families. Some are facing the consequences of climate change or are facing preventable, treatable diseases. Others are worried that the energy crisis will leave them in the cold this winter. All around the world, including in Canada, people are facing higher prices for groceries, for housing, and for filling up their cars or trucks. This week, here at the UN, we discussed these challenges during many meetings, including with the leaders of Suriname, Colombia, Chile, Moldova, France, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, and the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. D'abord, pour assurer la santé des gens et sauver des vies pendant ces moments difficiles, on continue de travailler avec nos alliés comme les États-Unis et plusieurs autres partenaires. Cet après-midi, j'ai participé à la conférence organisée par le président Biden pour combattre le VIH, la malaria et la tuberculose à travers le monde. Canada is committed to making our world healthier and that's why today we announced 1.21 billion dollars in new funding to help meet the global fund goal of saving 20 million lives over the next three years. When there's less suffering in the world, it creates stability that benefits everyone, including Canadians at home. In recent years, global food insecurity has been increasing because of the pandemic and other crises like climate change. Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine has been making things much worse. So yesterday I participated in the Global Food Security Summit where we discussed ways to respond to global hunger while building more resilient food systems. In June, Canada announced an investment of $250 million in humanitarian assistance to help address the global food security crisis. This includes $3 million for the Food and Agriculture Organization, $35 million for UNICEF, and $151 million for the World Food Program. It also includes funding for many Canadian NGOs, Action Contre la Faim, Alliance for International Medical Action, Care Canada, Canadian Food Grains Bank, Save the Children Canada, and World Vision Canada. On est là pour faire face à l'insécurité alimentaire et on est aussi là pour soutenir les pays qui confrontent d'autres défis. Cette semaine, le Canada a organisé une rencontre avec des partenaires de la région des Caraïbes. On a parlé de ce qu'on fait pour soutenir le développement durable et la stabilité d'Haïti. Pendant la rencontre, j'ai annoncé une contribution de 20 millions de dollars par le biais d'un programme de l'ONU pour aider Haïti à se reconstruire suite à son plus récent tremblement de terre. Et on va continuer de travailler avec nos partenaires pour lutter contre la pauvreté et la faim en Haïti et partout dans le monde. Of course, while we do all of this, we're also continuing our work to fight climate change and protect the environment. This morning, I co-chaired the Financing Ocean Solutions Panel with Prime Minister Stoda of Norway. The goal was to bring together partners from around the world on protecting our oceans and addressing the biodiversity crisis. As Canada welcomes the world to Montreal for the Nature COP in December, we'll continue driving ambition not just at home, but globally too.
With COP27 and COP15 coming up, we must have a united voice to deliver the results our world needs and our citizens are counting on. While I was here in New York at the UN, I continued to underline Canada's commitment to sustainable development goals at home and abroad. We must all take action to advance progress on the SDGs, government, private sector and citizens. Canada plays a leading role to make our world a better place during this time of crisis on keeping people healthy, on food security, on fighting climate change and protecting our oceans, on fighting harmful content online, on supporting Ukraine and defending democracy, en travaillant ensemble et en donnant la place à des voix diversifiées autour de la table des décisions, on continue de bâtir un avenir plus juste pour tout le monde. Merci beaucoup. Okay, merci tout le monde. Uh, nous avons maintenant 20 minutes pour des questions. We have 20 minutes for questions, starting with Radio-Canada. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Madeleine Blémorin. Je me demandais comment vous réagissez à la demande du président ukrainien qui dit que la Russie doit être punie, que son droit de veto doit être retiré. Est-ce que vous pensez que c'est une idée qui est appropriée et que c'est faisable? Mais on est dans une situation où euh, un des pays fondateurs de l'ONU sur euh, le Conseil de sécurité permanent est en train de violer les principes les plus profonds et fondamentaux de la charte de l'ONU elle-même. C'est une situation sans précédent et c'est pourquoi nous sommes en train et nous continuons de rallier les pays du monde, de continuer de souligner à quel point les actions de la Russie sont injustifiées, injustifiables et euh, doivent avoir des conséquences. C'est pour ça qu'on euh, appuie euh, l'idée d'enquête, de suivi, euh, de euh, reddition de comptes euh, contre Poutine pour euh, ses crimes de guerre, pour son invasion injustifiée, pour le tort qu'il est en train de faire à des millions de gens, pas seulement en Ukraine, mais à travers le monde, qui souffrent euh, de prix d'énergie, d'une crise énergétique, mais aussi euh, d'une crise alimentaire, entre autres. Okay. Um, we are facing an, an unprecedented situation where one of the founding members of the United Nations a uh, member of the Permanent Security Council, is violating the most basic tenets of what the UN stands for. This is why Canada continues to stand strongly in support of Ukraine, to hold Putin to account, and to ensure that countries around the world understand that this attack on the sovereignty, on the territorial integrity, on the well-being of um, an independent country like Ukraine, is absolutely unacceptable, why we continue uh, to ensure that uh, we do everything necessary to make sure Putin and his cronies are held to account uh, for their horrific actions, the illegal invasion, uh, and the war crimes that they are busy committing. Abigail Beeman, Global News. Uh, you mentioned Putin's nuclear threats in your comments. Do you think he's bluffing? Putin has fundamentally miscalculated in a whole bunch of different ways. He massively underestimated, first and foremost, the strength, the resilience, the courage of Ukrainians when it comes to defending their homeland, defending their rights to choose their own future. He also massively miscalculated when he thought democracies around the world would not stand up to defend the very core principles that underlie our democracies. Freedom to choose one's own future, territorial integrity, sovereignty. And these are things that are of concern not just to Western democracies, but to countries all around the world who are very aware of the fact that we cannot live in a world where might makes right. Putin was wrong, and he is right now failing and flailing at, in his response uh, to, uh, to this situation. Um, we need to continue to demonstrate the strength and solidarity, not just of countries around the world, but of people around the world. We know 
that we're facing higher food prices, that families are facing higher uh, gas bills and heating bills. And we're looking at a difficult winter. But we also know that Ukrainians are facing an even more difficult winter while they stand and fight, not just for their own country, but for the principles uh, that are at the foundation of our countries as well. Mr. Prime Minister? Um, I don't think I heard a direct answer as to the bluff, but I'd also like to ask you, as you talk about allies continuing to offer support for Ukraine, what are the next steps here concretely that, that Canada can do to, to help? Uh, Canada is going to continue uh, to strengthen our sanctions. We are going to continue to send military aid to Ukraine. We're going to continue to be there for humanitarian assistance. We're going to continue facilitating uh, measures to counter the global food crisis, uh, whether it's with our expertise in exporting and shipping grain around the world to get it out past the Russian blockade, as an initiative that uh, the UN and, and Turkey and others have worked so hard on. Uh, we're going to continue to stand uh, for the principles uh, that matter so deeply to Canadians and people all around the world. Uh, with absolute uh, firmness and, uh, and solidarity with people in Ukraine and continue to encourage and, and uh, uh, be there uh, for countries, particularly in the Global South, who are facing difficult times as they too stand against Russia. Other questions, please. Uh, it would be nice Sorry. to go around. Okay, next question, CTV, please. So, Hi, Prime Minister. I, you said in your opening remarks about uh, Vladimir Putin's behavior showing his in, invasion as failing and flailing. Can you specifically drill down about his behavior uh, that you find? Well, I think in, in his statement this morning uh, that he is, uh, first of all, uh, having to move towards uh, at least a partial conscription uh, in Russia, which is a step closer uh, to uh, admitting what he has not wanted to admit to Russians, that this is a war that he has launched unjustifiably against uh, a neighbor, um, is an example of things not going to, war to his plan. Uh, we are seeing the strength, the ability of the Ukrainians to retake uh, territories that a much larger force of Russians had taken but was unable to hold. Um, these are not things that uh, are going Putin's way, uh, which is why he's uh, continuing uh, with a plan to hold completely illegal and illegitimate referendums uh, in the Donbass uh, to further try to justify what is unjustifiable and why he continues to make absolutely unacceptable nuclear threats or musings um, that uh, we need to take seriously, but we also need to stand uh, very firmly against. Je pense que c'est très clair euh, que euh, que ce soit euh, au niveau de euh, la conscription partielle qu'il est en train d'amener en Russie quand il ne voulait pas admettre que euh, on est dans une situation euh, qu'il qu a lancé une guerre contre l'Ukraine, euh, que ce soit euh, au niveau euh, des référendums complètement euh, farfelu et illégitime qu'il compte tenir dans les territoires occupés du Donbass pour légitimiser ses actions euh, illégitimes, ou que ce soit par euh, ses menaces carrément irresponsables euh, par rapport à, à des interventions ou des actions nucléaires euh, potentielles, euh, on voit qu'il a, il a perdu euh, le, le contrôle de la situation. Monsieur le Président, M. le Président, In Canada, our focus has been every step of the way on listening to science, on responding uh, to the facts on the ground. And what we have seen consistently is that uh, people are still struggling in hospitals across our country uh, with the impacts of COVID. Uh, we all want this pandemic to be behind us as quickly as possible, which is why there is good news uh, in uh, a new series of vaccines uh, that have come out and we encourage people uh, to get vaccinated the way Canadians got vaccinated in record numbers uh, before. Get your vaccines up to date, and we will make sure that this pandemic gets behind us as quickly as we possibly can. May so I ask a question? Question? Please. 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 Please.
much. Sir, I want to ask you two questions. The first question is exactly. Sorry, Annabelle, what are we CBC, doing exactly please, here? CBC, please, Evan. Lift. It's on. Yeah, I'll just be louder. No, no, you, it's on. It's okay. on, Evan. Go ahead. Are you prepared to lift COVID border restrictions and random tests, and are you prepared to make Arrive Can voluntary? Uh, every step of the way, we have followed the recommendations and the best advice of medical experts, of um, public health experts, uh, and we will continue to do that. And I can assure you uh, that when we make decisions on how we can move forward and uh, change the situation uh, around various uh, tools that we have in place to keep Canadians safe, uh, Canadians will be the first to know. Sir, could you give more specifics CBC, also? Could you about the kind of military assistance that you're thinking of providing Ukraine in the future, vehicles, artillery, aircraft, training? What, what areas are you looking at and when might we expect to hear new announcements? Well, first of all, Canada has been uh, providing Ukraine one of the most fundamental important supports uh, since uh, the illegal invasion of Crimea, which is uh, training uh, of Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, back uh, for a number of years now, we've trained up uh, close to 35,000 uh, Ukrainian Defense Force members. That is uh, part of why they have been so tremendously effective alongside uh, trainers from the UK and the United States. Uh, that has made a huge difference. On top of that, uh, we've sent uh, ammunition, we've sent cameras uh, for drones, uh, we've sent uh, artillery, uh, we've sent everything from sniper rifles to, uh, to uh, helmets and vests. Uh, we've, uh, we're sending uh, light armored vehicles and enough equipment to repair and replace them. And we will continue to be there to send the kind of equipment that they ask for. Right now, uh, as they're pushing into uh, Russian, uh, formerly Russian-held territory uh, that is still part of Ukraine's uh, territory, um, their ask is for more ammunition, and that is what we are focused on sending so that they can uh, match the extraordinary expenditures of, uh, of munitions that uh, Russia, or try to match the extraordinary expenditures of munitions that Russia uh, is uh, sending on them every day. Mr. Prime Minister, La Vrouw is in town. La Vrouw is in town. Would you take the opportunity? Yes, sure. Thank you so much, sir. It's also about uh, military, but in the Middle East, exactly 28 days ago, uh, a uh, Canadian air detachment from the Middle East was relocated from its counterterrorism effort to United Kingdom in order to support your effort regarding to Ukraine. Is this the beginning of end of your military support for, for Iraq and Kurdistan region in terms of fighting terrorism and, and ISIS? Thank our, you so much. Our commitment to fighting terrorism, Canada's uh, long uh, standing commitment in Iraq to help uh, push back against Daesh uh, continues. Uh, we continue to be uh, active in a number of NATO missions, in a number of international missions um, to fight terrorism, to support uh, allies across NATO, to be there for friends like Ukraine, uh, to be present in theaters and conflicts around the world. Uh, Canada um, has always stepped up where needed around the world, uh, and we will continue to. You condemned, uh, back in June, the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. You called it horrific. Uh, what limits, if any, on abortion would you support? For example, any governmental restrictions on very late-term termination of pregnancy? Could you clarify your position on that, please? Thank you. In Canada, um, it is medical professionals who make determinations around, uh, around uh, what is best for um, mothers, particularly in late, late terms. Uh, in Canada, we support unequivocally women's right to choose. Uh, it is a fundamental tenet of freedom. Is it a fund fundamental tenet of uh, our society? that we stand up for women's rights. Uh, and as we see in the United States, attempts to roll back rights that women have fought for for generations, the idea that there are young girls growing up in the United States who will have less rights over their own bodies than their mothers did is exactly uh, what um, Canadians, Americans and people all around the world 
are so concerned about. We need to make sure we are standing up for people's rights and freedoms. And in Canada, we will do that by ensuring access uh, to abortion for every Canadian who wants it. And we will make sure we continue to fight for better health and reproductive rights all around the world, which used to mean being there to fight for health and pre reproductive rights in the global south. We'll help out in the United States if we need to as well. Minister, pardon, pardon, please. Ask question. Go ahead. Yes. To Canada's involvement in Haiti, please, for a moment. I know that you've been uh, meeting with partners here. Um, Haiti's security situation has only deteriorated over the past year. Can you point to any successes that Canada's involvement with its security forces have produced in the past year? And also, at what point would it be uh, um, considered uh, by Canada and, and your other partners here at the UN to uh, bring back peacekeepers to the country? Over the past many years, Canada has been involved in Haiti uh, by training police forces, by being there as part of UN missions, uh, by being there with significant uh, humanitarian aid, significant uh, capacity building and institution building. We will continue uh, to look for ways uh, to help out in Haiti as is necessary. But one of the things that is increasingly clear is that Haitians themselves need to be at the center of building stability and a long-term future for Haiti. Uh, we cannot continue to see uh, external elements, no matter how well-meaning, uh, try to determine the future of Haiti. That is why the conversation we had this morning, amongst other things, uh, talked about how we ensure uh, that there is accountability, including uh, for the elites and oligarchs uh, who uh, contribute to the instability in Haiti that we're seeing right now how we ensure uh, that we're there to strengthen uh, the civil society institutions and uh, the police institutions that are necessary. But after many, many years and even decades of the international community uh, trying to fix Haiti for Haitians, uh, we need to make sure that Haiti itself is driving the lasting change that we need to see. Uh, in that uh, once beautiful country that will be beautiful again. En français, uh, ça fait des années, même des décennies, que le Canada et la communauté internationale uh, interviennent de différentes façons en Haïti. Le Canada a été là pour uh, former et uh, accompagner les policiers. On était là avec des missions humanitaires de l'ONU et d'autres. On était là pour uh, reconstruire des institutions et aider, comme bien d'autres pays l'ont fait. La réalité que la seule piste pour l'Haïti, pour Haïti, c'est de voir les Haïtiens eux-mêmes décider de bâtir un avenir plus fort pour tous les Haïtiens. Et sur cela, je souligne le rôle que les élites haïtiens, qui continuent euh, d'activement déstabiliser euh, la population et la situation en Haïti, doivent jouer pour créer, pour participer eux-mêmes à créer une stabilité, un consensus politique qui va bâtir un avenir plus fort pour la Perle des Antilles. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day.